Amen. All right, let's open up to Hebrews chapter 11. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 11. So, uh, as we were praying about, uh, as we were praying about what to, you know, the direction to go this year in our services, I, uh, I felt like the Lord told us that 2024 would be a year of great faith. And, uh, and here's the thing about faith. We talked about this last week. We talked about what faith is and how faith is, faith is simply, the simplest form we can put, the simplest word we can put on faith. Um, is just it's a firm persuasion. Faith is a confidence. Faith is an assurance. Uh, faith is a conviction. And, you know, but here's the thing about faith. Your faith is only as good as, as, as how it's been tested. Right? Now listen, you, I can say all day long, I have great faith. But you know what? When a test comes... If I fail that test, you know what? My faith wasn't that great. You know, so so here's the thing about great faith. When the Lord said it's going to be a year of great faith, it means this. There may be, there may be some things that happen this year that will be happening this year that's going to require us to use faith and that will require you and I to step out and to have our faith tested. Amen. I didn't say, I, I don't mean that God's going to bring bad things into your life just to test your faith. But you, you've heard me say this for years, is that if it shows up on your doorstep, uh, you're more than able to overcome it. It would never show up on your doorstep. God will not allow something to show up that will that that is greater than you can handle. Because see, with Him, all things are possible to Him that believes. But you see, here's here's the reality of this: is that that what we're learning, and we're taking our time in this. You know, I learned. Um, you know, I, I grew up in church, and I I grew up in a denominational church, and I didn't hear anything about faith. You know, I I mean, I really I didn't. I mean, I I I, I learned about faith for salvation, and that was good. I mean, and and I heard that every Sunday, and but you know, as far as faith for living. I, I mean, I you know, man, I didn't know anything hardly. I mean, how, I didn't know how to exercise my faith. I didn't know how to how faith necessarily how faith came. I mean, I I knew the scriptures, what the scriptures said, but but how many of you know it's a lot different than to be able to quote a scripture than to really understand what it means. And and you know, and and I, I I've told this story many times, but when Stacy and I we had got married and and we stayed in Boone for one year and then we moved to Knoxville for a couple of years, and we knew that God was wanting us to go to school, and, and to we knew God had called us to pastor, or called us into the ministry, and uh, and so we we had uh, sent out, we, had, we were partners with a couple ministries, and, and we sent some things out saying, you know, hey, we're, we're wanting to, to grow and, and go to school somewhere, where would you recommend? Well, out of the three or four that replied back, Rama was the only one that, that was on all four of them. So we thought, well, Rama must be pretty something, you know. All four of them said that. So, so uh, her dad were, was kind of familiar with that area in Oklahoma, and, and so so we went out there, and and uh, and I asked my pastor where I was going with that story. I asked my pastor at the time there in Knoxville. I asked him. I said, well, I said, well, do you know anything about this Rama or Brother Hagen? You know, I'd never heard of him, other than I'd heard him, I'd heard Brother Copeland mention him. You know, Dad Hagen, but. That was about the only mention I, I had never heard him preach. The first time I heard Brother Hagen preach was the first day in class. I went to class. That's the first time I ever heard him preach a message. You know what I mean? So, uh, uh, but anyway, but I, so I asked my pastor. I said, "Well, I said, well, do you know anything about this?" And he gave. He said, "Well, here's the phone number of a guy that uh, a pastor that lives in Tulsa. If, if anybody knows anything about it, he'll know because you know that's that's where the school is there, or close to Tulsa is on the outskirts of Broken Arrow." So I called this guy up and I'm like, yeah, I say, hey, I'm thinking about going to, to Rama. You know, I said, I said, what, you know, have you got any advice? Have you got any thoughts about them? What? And here was his comment. He said, he said, well, he said, as far as I know, it's a good school. He said, you know, it's good people and all that. He said, but he said, but you just got to be careful. So they go, he said, sometimes they can go a little overboard on faith. You know, so I hung up the phone with him, and even, even after that, I, I just I, I just thought to myself, you know, if I want to go overboard on anything. Faith would probably be it, you know. 
I mean, it's, it's better to be overboard on faith than overboard on doubt and unbelief or, or worry and fear, right? So, so, uh, so, you know, so I learned from Brother Hagin, man. I, you know, Brother Hagin, the Lord gave him, raised him off his deathbed and when he was 16, and, and, uh, and, and he, he started teaching faith, and for 60-some years, Brother Hagin taught faith. The Lord gave Brother Hagin the mandate, go teach my people faith. And, and for 60-some years, Brother Hagin taught faith. And if, and if you heard Brother Hagin teach, I guarantee you, I don't care what he was teaching on, you heard him teach faith in every message he ever preached. You know, he came back around to faith somehow, you know. He, he incorporated faith into it, amen. So, so I, I feel like I learned from one of the best. Brother Hagin, I, I still, listen, Brother Hagin passed away in 2003, the year we started this church. Brother Hagin passed away the same year we started this church. And I still, that's 20, over 20 years ago, and I still listen to Brother Hagin's sermons. I mean, I still, I still cut my teeth and I still learn from Brother Hagin because I'm telling you, uh, when you find something that works, why, why do you look for anything else, right? I mean, you know, his, his messages speak to me and, and I, I still, I mean, I, I still love Brother Hagin's uh, messages and, and his, the way he taught faith. And so, so you'll hear me talk about Brother Hagin a lot, amen, because that's, he's just, that's just where, where I cut my teeth on faith. But, but anyway, but the Lord told us, the Lord told, told me this year that it would be a year of great faith. And, and so, so I had in my heart just to go back and teach on the foundations of faith again just to make sure that you and I make sure that we that we all, um, you know, that we all are uh, that our foundation is sure, and that as we build as we build on on these things that that God has given us this year, as we build these things that He's given us, that our foundation of faith is sure. Amen. I, I've 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 had a lot of people, you know, I've heard a lot of people say, "Man, my faith is strong." But then they go through a test or trial and they fall apart. And and I, you know, and and I mean, I'm not a judge. The Bible, I, I mean, God didn't give me the, the the position of judge, so I don't I don't necessarily judge people one way or the other. But but the Bible does say you can judge people by their fruit. And if you fall apart in a trial, then I can guarantee you your faith wasn't very strong. I mean, that's just the reality of it, right? So we want to make sure, I want to make sure as your pastor, and I hope you want to make sure because I want to make sure that my faith is strong so that when trials do come, and they will come, we're not, we're, we're you know, the Bible says that, that tests and trials will come our way. It didn't say, you know, that now that we're Christian, we're, we won't ever have tr- trouble. No, we will have tests and trials. But when they come our way, I want to make sure our, found, our foundation is sure and that faith will get us through anything. The Bible says in 1 John that this is, the, this is the confidence that overcomes the world, even our faith. So your faith, faith, and you know, all throughout Jesus' ministry, time and time again, you see him ministering to people, and you see him saying, your faith has healed you. Your faith has set you free. Your faith, you know, according to your faith, be it done to you. So see, your faith is an important part. And we're going to look at, now last week we looked at what is faith, you know, and we, and we qualified that and we said that faith is a confidence, it's an assurance, it's a firm persuasion, and, you know, and just knowing, knowing what, what God has said is true. And our faith, now remember this, this is something we'll go back to many times, but our faith is in Jesus. We don't put faith in our own faith. You know, we don't put faith in ourselves. The Bible is very clear on this. Our faith is not a self-righteous faith. God is not pleased with the self-righteous faith. Our faith is in Jesus Christ and the death, burial, and resurrection and what He did for us. That's why we get power. That's why our faith works. Because if, if our faith was simply faith in you, then boy, we would be. it wouldn't take long before we'd be in a ditch somewhere. But see, when you put your faith in what Jesus has done, then that will never put you in a ditch. Amen. That will never steer you wrong. Amen. So just keep that in mind. So let's look at Hebrews 11. 11 and we're going to look at, we went over some of these scriptures uh, last week, but I want to add a couple more things. And man, this week, the Lord really, this has really jumped out at me, and I want you to see this this week. As we talk about the, uh, 
I don't know whether I want to call this why faith or the importance of faith. You know, last week we talked about what faith is, but but sometimes I think it's good to know, uh, you know, what faith, why it's important that we understand faith. I guess that's maybe what we're going to talk about. That's the way I'll label this. Why it's important that we understand uh, understand faith. So Hebrews 11.1 1 is the definition. It gives us the definition of faith and and uh, and a good description of it. It says this. Now faith is. So the first thing, and, and bear with me because we're going to take this slow and I'm going to do a lot of teaching, okay? Notice that the first thing about faith is that it's now. It didn't say in the future faith will be. You know, the, the, the definition of faith given to us in Hebrews 11 says this. Now faith is. And we talked a little bit about this, and we're gonna we'll we'll teach in depth on this, but but just you know just to let you know, um, faith and hope are different. Faith and hope are not the same thing, and a lot of people that say that they're in faith are actually just in hope, and and they don't know the difference between the two. But you're going to know the difference, and you're going to understand why why faith is now and why hope is always the future, okay? And we're going to look at a little bit about that today. We're not going to go as in-depth on that, but but we're going to be hitting that as we go along. So he says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So notice that. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So your hope, hope is always for the unseen. Hope is for what you don't have. Hope is for something that you're that you're believing for, okay? That are, that you're expecting in the future, that you're believing. But but what faith is the difference between faith and hope? You're hoping for this thing, but what faith does? Faith reaches out and says, "I'll take that hope and I'll bring it into today. I'll bring it into now because now faith is the substance of things hoped for." And the difference, one of the big differences of that you can see, I mean, I'm sure you've seen this illustration, if if like Stacy was believing for a Bible or hoping for a Bible, and I walked up and handed her a Bible, well, when I handed her that Bible, she wouldn't have to hope for it anymore. Why? Because she had it. You know, and, and it's a reality now. She was hoping for it, and now something brought it into existence. And now she's got a hold of it, and when you get a hold of it, then it's it's yours. It's it. You, there's no longer faith or hope required for it. It's now yours, right? So so he says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So faith brings. I want you to notice as we go through this today, how many times he talks about the invisible, things not seen. Because, see, that's really important because we, we touched this last week. Faith is not calling the things that are as they are not. See, a lot of people get that mixed up. We, we hit that last week. The Bible says faith is calling the things that be not as though they are. The things that are not seen, it brings them into reality. Faith doesn't take the things that are seen and make them disappear. Now, you know, in your believing, it can take like a, a, maybe a sickness or a problem. And, and the Bible said, Mark eleven twenty three. 23, we know they said if you, if you say in your heart, you believe in your heart, and, you know, you say unto this mountain, be, you, know, uh, you know, be gone, be cast into the sea. If you don't doubt those things you say in your heart, you'll have what you say. So, so faith can help you remove things, but faith in and of itself calls the things that be not as or the things that be not and brings them into existence. Okay? So we'll 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 look at we'll look at that as we go too. Now let's go on and look, read verse two and three. And I want you to notice here how much he talks about faith and what faith's operation is and why this is going to be important. And and we're going to put this together with a couple things here as we as we go through the message today. So verse number two says this for by it, or by faith, right? Because he was talking about faith in verse 1. So by, for by faith, 
the elders obtained a good testimony. So the elders or the, or the men and women of God that went on before us and that the Bible was written before the Bible, it says that by faith they obtained a good testimony. So that would tell us what? That they lived by faith. We saw in, in Romans 1.17 last week where we started, the Bible, the Bible tells us the just live by faith. Amen. So, so here we can see that the elders that went on before, they lived by faith because, because it tells us that by, by faith they received a good testimony. But then look at verse 3. It says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. I mean, that's really important. Notice that. The worlds were framed by the word of God. So one thing we're going to find out about faith is this, and, and I'm giving you all these little things. We're not talking about it as much today. But one thing you're going to find out about faith is this. Your words are very important to your faith. As a matter of fact, it's probably one of the most important things about your faith. And it says here, notice here, that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Now listen to this. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Now that's a little confusing to, to understand maybe, but, but what that says is this that God created the world out of nothing. He created the things that are seen out of things that were not seen. Did you see that? Notice what it said. It says, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So what does that mean? They were made of things that were not visible. So when God spoke His words he, you know, by, and, and God, whatever He says is going to come to pass because God can't lie. And, and God's Word always comes to pass. Not one word that God has spoken will ever be un, unsettled. Amen. So it says by His words, when He created His words, the very things that we see, talking about when He formed the earth, the very things that we see were created from things that did not exist. In, the nat in other words, things that you can see in the natural. Now, you might say, why did you say that? Well, because that plays a huge role in how you live your life by faith. And you're going to see this. Now, skip down to verse 6, and let me show you this. It says, but, but without faith, well, actually, let's look at verse 5, because this is talking about Enoch, and, and this, this is important. It says, by faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. Listen to this next statement. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. So Enoch pleased God. Now listen to this next verse, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. So what does that tell us? That tells us that Enoch had faith. If Enoch's testimony was that he pleased God, and then the Bible turns right around and says, but without faith it is impossible to please God, then we can take from those two sentences that Enoch had faith. Because the only way that you and I can ever please God is when we put our faith in Him. So Enoch put his faith in God and it pleased God and it was Enoch's faith was so strong that Enoch was just spending time with God one day and, and he just said, I don't want to go back. And God said, well, you can stay. And nobody saw Enoch again. Well, that's pretty awesome. Amen. You know, his faith pleased God. But now, note, now I want you to notice this. Let's go on and read the rest of this verse. But without faith it is impossible to please God. For, for, who, for he who comes to God must believe that God is and that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. So there's two things about God. You have to believe, number one, you have to have faith that God is who He said He is. That God is. But not only do you have to believe that God is, 
you also have to believe that God, that, that it is a truth that when you diligently seek Him, He will do what He said He will do. You know, we sang that song this morning uh, where it said, I believe He's speaking, I believe He's moving, you know, I believe uh, He's working all things for our good. You know, you can say that and you can sing that, but if you don't believe that, it's not going to make a difference in your life at all. But if you believe, you see, so many people, I hear so many people say, uh, you know, well, Pastor, I just can't hear the voice of God. You know, I just can't hear God speak to me. I, I just, you know, I, I just don't, I don't know. And, and you know, and sometimes I've asked this question, but other times they tell on themselves, even by their words. But sometimes I'll even, I'll even ask the question, well, do you believe God can speak to you today? And you know what? Sometimes those people say, well, I don't know. You know what? If you don't believe that God will speak to you, then chances are you won't hear Him because you're not listening for it. But if you go into your prayer time, if you go into your time and your time, your prayer time and your word time and time in His presence, if you go into it and you even make the confession, Lord, I believe you're speaking to me today. Lord, I believe you're, you're going to show me things today. I believe you're going to, op- Holy Spirit, you're going to open up this word. And as I read this word, it's going to become alive to me. You're going to speak to me through your word, through prayer. You know, if you go into your prayer time like that, you will hear the voice of God. You will hear him speak to you. But if you don't believe it, you know, if you don't believe he speaks, if, you know, uh, I, I've heard people, I've heard people that, uh, you know, anytime you have a healing ministry or a supernatural ministry, people are going to come against that and tell you that it's not for today and all this. And, and I've heard, I've heard different ministers say this, that in some of their conversations with people that don't agree with them, they'll make comments like this. Well, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll be saying, well, I don't believe that God heals. I don't believe that God does this. I don't believe that God does that today. And the pastors will ask them, well, how, how many people have you prayed for to be healed? Well, none, because I don't believe God heals. Well, that's why you don't see healings. If, you, if you're not praying for people to get healed, you'll never see anybody healed. Amen. If you're not, if you're not expecting for God to speak to you, then you're never going to hear him speak to you. You see, you there, there's a part that there's a huge part in our relationship with God is our believing that God is who He said He is and that He will do what He said He would do. And if you don't believe those things, then you're not going to receive from God. And that's what this verse says. He says, without faith, it is impossible. So these two things, you have to have faith that God is and you have to have faith that God He that that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. But now look at verse 7. Now we'll, we're probably going to come back and unpack that some more, but I'm, I'm trying to get somewhere this morning. Look at verse 7. I just I read on a little bit, and this, and this just speaks to this. Because remember, we're talking about, I want you to see the invisible this morning. I want you to see the importance the invisible plays in your faith walk. Okay? Because he says that, you know, he, he said, verse 1, it said that faith is the substance of things hope for, the evidence of things not seen. Then it said that, you know, God created the world and, and it was the things we seen, the things we see were not created by things that are that were seen. And then look at verse 7. This is an interesting verse. By faith, Noah. So notice he said that Noah, this Noah did this by faith. It says, by faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen. He moved with godly fear. So now let's, before I read the rest of it, get this picture. So God showed up to to Noah one day and told Noah, Noah, I'm going to flood the earth. It's going to rain. The first question Noah had is this, what is rain? Because the Bible said it had never rained up to that time. God had some type of irrigation over the earth that the dew rose up from the from the from the ground and it watered everything and no water fell from the from the sky. They had never seen rain. 
So when God showed up to Noah and told him, Noah, I'm going to send rain and flood the earth, he said, he, you know, he said, watch rain. And, you know, and knowing God, he probably said, it don't matter what rain is. I'm just going to flood the earth. Do what I tell you to do. <laughs> In other words, God, sometimes he doesn't explain himself. He just says, this is what I said. Now just go do it. And God warned him and God told him, he said, Noah, build this huge boat in the middle of dry ground that's going to take you years and years and years to build. People are going to persecute you. People are going to laugh at you. People are going to call you crazy. People are going to make all... And, and we don't even think about this. Where did he get the money to do this? This is a huge boat. I mean, this wasn't just a little canoe. I mean, this thing was big enough to hold two of every animal. I mean, we're talking about a huge, a huge thing here. So God, so it says, now notice what it said. It says that God warned Noah of things not yet seen. And what did Noah do? He moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household. Now listen to this. By which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Um, Paul, put that up from the... Uh, I think it's the message. Let's look at the message in verse 7 there. I believe, I believe it's in the message. I saw this that brought this out really well. Now listen to this. By faith, Noah built a ship in the middle of dry ground. He was warned about something he couldn't see. God told him, you know, in so many years it's going to start raining. And Noah just said, okay, I'll, I'll act on what you tell me. It says he was warned about something he couldn't see and acted on what, what he was told. The result, his family was saved. You know what the result of your faith will do? It'll save your family. When God tells you to do something, if you will act in faith and act on, on what he tells you to do, regardless of whether you understand it or not fully, it, it, it pays to, to obey God. Amen. His family was saved. Now listen to this. Now, I love this. Listen to this. His act of faith drew a sharp line between the evil of unbelieving, the evil of the unbelieving world and the rightness of the believing world. Noah's acting on the word of God drew a line. And that line was this. Are you going to believe what God said or are you going to believe your senses? Your, your, you know, what you've always done. And it drew a sharp line. And you know what? Nobody, nobody other than his family crossed that line. Everybody stayed on the, everybody stayed unbelieving. Mocked Noah, laughed at Noah, made, ridiculed him, made fun of him. It goes on. As a result, Noah became intimate with God. When you act on faith, it will bring you closer to God. All those people laughed until when? That first raindrop hit them on the head. Then they were like, hmm, Noah may have been onto something. And it was fine for a little bit until, until there was so much rain that it started, it started coming up to their ankles and then they're, they're their knees, and then you know what they all did? I think they all started running toward Noah's house. But you know what? It was too late. The line had been drawn, right? So listen, what I'm trying to say is this. The importance of, of faith, and Noah here in this verse, it says that he, that he acted on something he could not see. And when he acted on it, it saved him and his family. Now, let's look at a couple other passages here because this is going to play a big part. Let's look in Galatians, Galatians chapter 2. Now, the, the good news is that every week I'm going to try and give you some good nuggets. The bad news is you're going to have to come back for a long time to get all this because I'm taking it slow. I'm not giving you a whole bunch at one time. Amen. So you'll have to come back on a regular basis to get this. Amen. Which is not a bad thing. <clears throat> Amen. Galatians chapter 2. 
<clears throat> now we're talking about the importance or why faith is important for us. In, in Galatians chapter 2, we'll look at verse 16 and then skip down to verse 20 and 21. Galatians 2, 16. It says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So here's one of the reasons why faith is important to you. You are justified by faith. Now what is just what is justification? We've, we've went over this. You know this. Justification, the word justified, we could say it like this. People have said it like this. Just To be justified means this. It's just as just if I had never sinned. When you're justified, it's just as if you had never sinned. And how do you get justified? By faith. Notice what he said here. He said, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but you're justified by faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed, even we who have believed in Christ Jesus, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not of the works of the law, for by the works of the law do, uh, are no fle- is no flesh shall be justified. So, so the one, th- one thing about the reason it's important is that you're justified by faith. Now skip down to verse 20 and 21 and listen to this. Verse 20, Paul said this. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. And he says, who loved me and gave himself for me. So we've been crucified with Christ. And he says, and he says, but now Christ, you know, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life we now live, we live by faith. We saw the scripture in Romans 1.17. The just shall live by faith. But now notice verse 21. This is where I want you to see one of the verses. Verse 21 says this. I do not set aside the grace of God. Now, I believe the I believe the King James says, "I do not frustrate the grace of God." I do not set aside or frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then the, the then Christ is not in vain. So, what is grace? We we've we've looked at grace, but but what is grace? We could say this: that grace is everything that God's given us. I like the definition. I like the definition that Jim Richards has that and uses. He he says that grace is God's ability on the inside of me, allowing me to do something I can't do in my own ability. It's God's ability inside of me, allowing me to do things that I can't do in my own ability. I mean, that's a good definition. In other words, it's it's all because of Him. If it wasn't for Him, I wouldn't be able to do it. That's grace. Amen. But now notice, notice this. Paul said this. When he's talking about he lives his life by faith, he's, then he says this. He says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Now, if, if grace is what God gives us, if grace is God's ability, if grace is, is all the things that God gives us, then how can we how how would we frustrate that? Well, let me ask. I, I'll put it. I'll put it another way. Maybe this will help you. If if I saw you had a problem and you were struggling with something, and I maybe uh, uh, gosh, I don't know. Maybe you you were working on your car and and you needed a specific part or a specific tool to do something, and you had tried everything else and nothing else worked. And I had the I had the tool or the part, and I come up and I say, I say, you know, Ken, here's this tool, here's this part, you know, if you'll use this, you'll fix your car in no time, you know. And I and then I watch Ken, I watch Ken say, oh well, thank you, man, I need to get my car fixed, and he takes it and he walks away, and as he's walking away, I see him just throw it in the trunk of his car, and then go back and and try and do try and keep doing what he was doing. Well, you know what? That would probably frustrate me. Because I would be like, Ken, I told you that if you use this part, you could fix your car. 
You know, so the thing that the thing that would frustrate the giver of the gift is seeing the person that, that he gave the gift to not use the gift. That would frustrate you. I mean, and I'm sure, listen, I'm sure it's happened to all of us. We've given people things and, and then we watch them turn right around and not use it or or turn right around and and do something do something else and and you know and then we're just sitting there shaking our head like you know <laughs> if they had only done what I told them or only used the gift I gave them that it would have been so much simpler well how do you think god feels god watches us struggle and he watches us go through so much trying to do it in our own ability in our own timing in our own way and he's up there saying I've given you everything you need. Just trust me. So Paul said, Paul said, listen, I don't frustrate the grace. So if you use the grace that God gives you, then you won't frustrate it. And you'll find that it'll flow freely. Amen. Let's look at a couple more. Look in Ephesians, just a couple books over, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Ephesians 2, 8. And Ephesians 2, 8 says this, For by grace have you been saved through faith, and not of yourselves, but it is the gift of God. So salvation. Salvation comes, the Bible tells us that we're saved by grace, but not by grace alone. It says we're saved by grace through faith. So see, you have to, there, it goes back to Hebrews eleven six. 6. You have to have faith in what God says. You have to receive what He's done for you, and by, by faith you have to believe and receive that grace, and that's how great, that's how salvation comes. You know, now there, there's a, I mean, there's a movement going on right now, and and you know, and, and Brother Hagen always talked about that. You know, every twenty or twenty five years, these things come back around. He said it's just like a cycle; they just put a different bow on it, and you know, or a different gift wrapping on it, and and come and call it a different name or something. But there's a big movement going on right now. Uh, it's really no different than ultimate reconciliation, but that that says that everybody's going to make it to heaven. And there is no hell, and that that eventually everybody's going to figure it out, and everybody's going to know that God loves them, and and somehow eventually, whether it's in this life or whether it's after you die, they're going to figure it out, and they're all going to make it to heaven. Uh, let me think how to say this. I probably have one word for that: wrong, because. Everywhere I see in the Bible it says this. It's by faith, it's by our trusting and believing in Jesus Christ that Jesus is the only way and our faith in Him is the only way we're ever going to make it to heaven. You know, now, now you know, they can pretty it up, they can put all kinds of bows and all kinds of pretty wrapping on it, but, but at the end of the day, you know, your faith is what... You know, and it's not, your faith is not works. Listen, like I told you, your faith is not faith in you. It's just simply believing that Jesus did, that he, what he did on the death, in, in the death, burial, and resurrection paid the price for you and your acceptance of that gift. So when you stand before God, you're not going to be able to stand and brag and say, oh, I had great faith. That's why you should let me in heaven. No, it's going to be, I don't deserve to be here. I'm just, Jesus died on my behalf. And, and what he did allowed me to be standing before you today, and, and it's by faith that I'm here. It's simply grace by faith, you know. So, so you know, it's, it's not, you know, here he says, it says, for by grace have you been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. Then look over in chapter 3, verse 12, I believe it is. Now listen to this. This is an interesting verse. <clears throat> Chapter 3, verse 12. He says this, In whom, 
talking about, talking about Jesus, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in Him. So we actually, we actually, through our faith, we have confidence that gives us access into the things of God. It's by faith that we access those things. It's by faith, it's, it's, it, says that, it says in whom, or in Jesus, we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in Him. Praise God. So it's, it's, it's by faith that we have that access and confidence. Now turn back to Romans 5, and I'm almost through. I'll be, I'm going to try and tie all this together for you this morning. Because this is good, what the Lord showed me on this, this is good. So Romans 5, 1 and 2. Romans 5, 1 and 2. And we'll finish up. It says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, there again is the, our justification by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace. So that even says it you know, even better than what Ephesians just said. So we have access by faith into grace, into what He's done for us. This grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Now here's what the Lord told me. Let me, let me see if I can put all this together. We started talking about in Hebrews 11 about seeing the unseen and how God spoke, when God spoke, he spoke the world and created the world out of things that weren't seen. Then Noah, Noah, we read in Hebrews eleven seven 7, that he got a warning from God about something he had never seen, but he acted on it in faith. And then we, we learn about we're justified by faith. We have access to God by faith. But here, here's why the invisible or how the invisible can, can play a part in our faith. The promises of God in our lives. When we're believing God for a promise, when we're believing God, let's let's we'll just say we're believing God for healing. That's a big one. We're believing God for healing, and we know that God says that God says, you know, by His stripes we were healed. And we know that the Bible, you know, we we see time after time that everybody that came to Jesus was healed. Jesus never turned anybody away. Everybody that ever came to Jesus for healing received their healing. So, so, so a sickness comes and attacks us. We're, we're, you know, we're hit with symptoms. And, and then so we start, we start you know, quoting scriptures and we, we stand on the word and we start saying, you know, I believe, you know, Jesus, I believe by your stripes I'm healed. And, and, you know, and, I, I, and we've got our healing scriptures and we start standing on them. And, and, you know, and, and uh, how does faith play a part in that? Well, here's how faith can help you access. Remember, it's by faith that we have access into the grace of God, right? We just read that scripture. So here's how we access those promises. We see a promise that we don't have. In other words, the Bible says we're healed. Right now, we're being attacked with sickness. So we can stand in faith. And we can access the thing that we don't have, which is healing, and we can bring it into existence with our faith by believing and looking at a promise that we don't have right now. In other words, I've got sickness in my body. Well, God says I'm healed. Well, that's something I don't have. So by faith, I reach out and grab that healing and I bring it into the natural now, and by faith, I grab hold of it, and I say, now, that healing is mine. I'm, gra- I'm accessing that grace that God has given for healing, and I'm bringing it into reality right now. By faith. What is faith? It's a firm persuasion. It's a confidence. In other words, I look to the cross. I looked to the cross and I said, Jesus, I believe what you did on the cross for me. I believe in your death, burial, and resurrection. So therefore, I access what you did for me with my faith. I'm reaching out and grabbing hold of that and bringing it 
into my reality today. And I'm going to receive, I receive that right now for, for, you know, I receive what I don't have, I receive it, and I receive healing, and healing displaces that sickness, and that sickness has to leave. Now, did you get that because you worked, or did you get that because you read so many Bible verses, or you could quote so many verses? No. You got that, you received that, because you received it by faith. You put your faith in what He did for you in the death, burial, and resurrection. And it's not because you can quote verses. It's not because you can do this or that. No, it's because you reach out with the hand of faith and grab hold of that promise which is unseen at the moment. Amen. You grab hold of that unseen promise and you bring it into existence. Does that make sense? And that's how you bring the invisible, that's how you bring the invisible to the visible. By faith. Jesus, I believe what you did for me on the cross. I believe your, I believe the, the stripes that were put on your back, I believe they paid for my healing. So I'm reaching out and grabbing hold of that. I'm accessing it by faith and I'm receiving that healing into my body right now. Amen. And that's how you access the invisible, the things you don't have. You reach out with the hand of faith and you bring them in. You believe that God is and that He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him and that His word is true and that what He said will happen. Amen. And you grab it by faith. You grab it with that firm persuasion, with that confidence, with that, with that belief that what He said is real. And that what He said would happen, it will happen. Amen. And we don't, and now, now listen, and we don't frustrate the grace, we don't frustrate what God has done by not believing. Amen. That's how you frustrate by not using what God has already given us. So when it comes to healing, you know, the one way you can frustrate that grace is to stay sick. <laughs> Amen. If you stay sick, you're frustrating grace. It's not God's fault. Amen. It's something to do with us. Amen. Because God didn't design that. He didn't want you to go through that. Your faith can overcome that. But it's up to us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And then when we realize that, the quicker we realize that, that it's up to us, then the quicker we'll be able to receive those things. Amen. So faith reaches into the invisible and brings those promises of God into the now and we receive it and we start walking in the promise. And that promise, remember, there's always, in every problem, there's always a promise. You can find a promise of God for every problem you're facing. And, and it's a matter of faith to reach into the invisible and grab hold of that promise and bring it into the existence to give the answer to the problem that you're facing today. Amen. Amen. That's the power of faith. That's why faith is important. You're justified by faith. You're saved by grace through faith. You receive the things of God by, by faith. You access the things of God by faith. Everything, listen, all the promises of God are yes and amen. Amen. It's just a matter of us receiving them and saying yes to Him. Amen. Amen. Well, bow your head with me just for a moment. Let's pray and just see if God wants to, what God wants to do this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, um, I am a, I'm a firm believer that that is God's um, greatest desire for you and I to um, to learn to walk in this and operate on this in such a level that we don't have to have other people pray for us. 
you know, that, that when you pray, when you enter your prayer closet and you pray, you see answers. You know what I mean? Because this is not about going to the most anointed person and going to the most anointed church and going to the, you know, whatever. I mean, whatever, whatever people do. This is, you know, the whole thing about God is just about a relationship with Him. It's about, it's about you and Him falling so in love with each other that it's like you become one. You know, every thought you have is His thought. Every desire you have is His desire. Every, every motive of yours is a motive of His. Everything you love, He loves. Everything you hate, He hates. Man, that's, I mean, that's what it's about. And, and that's, that's what this access into, into Him gives us. We're able just to, to step right into those, that relationship with Him. But it starts with faith. It starts with you putting your faith in Jesus. It starts with you simply saying yes to Him. And if you've never given your life to Jesus, there'd be no greater day than today than, to, than for you to say yes to Him and start that journey. And once you start that journey, it'll be it'll be the greatest journey you've ever been on. I mean, it'll be the greatest relationship. So if you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you've never you never given Him the opportunity to be your Lord and, and your Savior. I would love I would love to be able to to pray with you today and introduce Jesus to you. If you're here and you don't know Him as your Savior, would you just slip your hand up? I'd love to be able to pray with you. I won't embarrass you. I'm just I just want to pray for you. And, and make sure you're on your way to heaven. Praise God. Anybody at all? Well, I take that that we're all we're all born again and we're on our way to heaven. And let's stand to our feet just for a moment. And if you have a need this morning, if you're here and you and you have a need, and, and listen, I, I, I didn't say that earlier, meaning that I don't like to pray for people, because I do like to pray for people. We we like to we like to agree with people and and you know, and we'll lay hands on people and, and help people. I mean, but but you know, if, if you know, because we all we all need encouragement at times, right? And we all need people to come alongside us and, and encourage us and help us. Um, and you know, because listen, all of us are not there yet. Amen. All of us don't are, are not fully mature in the things of the Lord yet, and we're all growing. Listen, nobody nobody's fully mature, you know, fully. Nobody's got it all figured out. Amen. We're all, we're all in a in a process of of walking. Now, every day should be better. We should be closer every day to Him. Amen? And every day we should be more and more like Him. But if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I just need you to come alongside of me. I need you to pray with me. I need prayer. Uh, Stacy and I would love to pray with you. We'd love to, to come alongside and pray for you. Anybody at all need prayer, just make your way down and we'll pray for you. And, uh, you know, we, we, love, we, love, we love agreeing. We love seeing people grow and, and just believe in God. And,